former oil field roustabout who now advocates for environmentally responsible policy will join us with his perspective on what the oil spill can and should mean for America. And in our fourth story tonight, I should probably mention that the former oil field roustabout is actor and director Robert Redford, now nearly as well known for his environmental advocacy. In a new online video for the Natural Resources Defense Council, Mr. Redford, a longtime NRDC trustee, argues that maybe we, the nation, needed this kind of spill to be this bad, to wake us up, to put pressure on politicians, especially those that, he says, are in collusion with big oil. That big oil's pro-green spin makes him want to throw up, that the spill will help America America get to the truth about the oil industry, stop what's going on, move to a clean energy policy, and stop listening to the oil companies and quote their parrots in Congress. This a sequel of sorts to his web video last month calling on the president to take the lead in putting America on the path to clean energy. As promised, with us now, former oil field roustabout Robert Redford, better known as actor, director, and environmental activist. Thank you again for your time, sir. Thank you. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell criticized the president, saying he was using the spill to advocate for clean energy policies. Um, I think that's a fair characterization of what you're doing, in a sense, if not using, using might be the wrong word. But what's your response to Senator McConnell's proposition there? Well, my response is, what do you expect? <clears throat> if you follow his track, uh, it's totally predictable. I mean, that, to me, that's a voice, along with a few others, that's coming out of the Ice Age. Um, but you would expect that. They're basically that. <clears throat> those folks are just trying to do anything to stop Obama, no matter what he does. So I, I don't pay any attention to that because it's predictable. What I'm interested in is <clears throat> all the truth that's coming out now about this spill. Um, I think is good. I'm sad that it took this kind of a disaster, which is not over yet, to get us there. But what I'm interested in is connecting the dots historically. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if we had believed, if we had believed the propaganda coming out of these people or not believed it, we would have realized that there have been many disasters. When they were saying, no, we're safe, we got it all figured out, don't worry about it, and we bought that song, had we been aware of the dots prior, we would have said, well, wait a minute, what about the BP disaster in Texas? What about Exxon Valdez? What about Santa Barbara in 69? What about Texaco Chevron and the Amazon? What about Niger? What about Brittany? So forth. So there have been disasters. They're not telling the truth. We weren't focused on it. Why? Because of the collusion between government, Congress, and the oil companies. <clears throat> it's time to break that up, and it better be done quick. And the current president, I'm sympathetic to what he's dealing with, because mm -hmm. I don't think anybody was prepared. I don't think the government or BP was prepared. And so they're, they're really scurrying around trying to figure out what to do about it. I think he's doing okay. He's doing the best he can. He's got to do more. And he's got to do it in a very, very strong, clear, decisive way. And he's got to articulate exactly what needs to be done and what the government's going to do. For me, it's plain and simple. We've been dependent on non-renewable energy for most of a century. When are we going to get on to an alternative of, of renewable energy sources? It's just been sitting there in the wings, waiting to be adhered to. <clears throat> we haven't done it because of the collusion. And so it's time to end that and get a new energy policy, get rid of this sick and dangerous energy policy that what the Cheney put in there, and mm -hmm. that was a disaster. But you knew it was going to be a disaster because he closed doors and, and had the oil, gas, and, and coal companies design it for him. <clears throat> that kind of cynicism we got to get rid of because the American people are the ones who are paying the price for it. When, when, when we talk about pol <clears throat> politicians and, as you call it, the collusion between the, the oil companies and, and the politicians, is, is it of value to discuss that without throwing people, people's names out there to just say politicians? Is that sufficient or is it incumbent upon you to name specifically who you mean? I'm not into, I, I don't want to get into names because I think those people speak for themselves. When, when a guy comes up and, and bellows about apologizing to BP, I don't mm -hmm. have to mention his name. I think it, it comes across. It's, those voices are all going to be saying the same thing as long as they can. And we have to get, get past that. And Congress has to get past it. And Obama has to push Congress in a new direction. And for them to use the old saw about, well, it's an election year, we can't do it now, let's get a commission. I personally am very much against that because if this disaster is called for anything, it's called for immediate action on an energy bill 
Forget McCollin and those voices. They will always try to kill something like that. But we need it. And now's the time, not later. If we don't do it now, God knows what the consequences will be later. We've already had enough damage to our environment, enough damage to people's livelihood, their, their jobs, their safety, their health, their well-being. It breaks my heart to see that. Well, we better change that. And the way to change it, in my mind, is to get a new energy bill now, not later. So, uh, in terms of individuals, your ideal viewer sees the new, the new video that you've done at, uh, at nrdc.org, and in a perfect world, the viewer of that video then turns around and does what? Well, I would hope that, but for me, you know, I'm, I'm for the American people. I, I think that I would like to see the American people have more of a voice in uh, their future that this situation was involved in, and I think that to be able to have that voice, they got to first get the truth. They got to get the right information. They can't be getting information from Chevron that says we're in the human energy business, or BP saying we're beyond petroleum. Come on, I mean, it's crap. And, and so, therefore, you, you've got to get the people. You've got to give them the information, the truth. That's part of the responsibility of our government and the media. And whatever voices out there can help. And so, the more the people get the information, the more they will raise their voices. I hope to push the president, to push Congress in a direction we, we, we were so overdue in going to. Mm -hmm. Last point, uh, the references to your uh, early career as an oil field roustabout were not just gratuitous in hopes of getting people to watch this. Uh, you mentioned this in your own video about the, the, that you learned things and had opinions that, that came to you during that time. Uh, give me a highlight uh, as we go. What, what, what did you learn there? Well, first of all, I learned the, the, the role of money, how important the role of money is in all of this, because I took that job because it offered good money for me as a, as a, as a teenager to work. <clears throat> I'd worked in Yosemite National Park, but this paid so much more money, and that was a big deal for me as a mm -hmm. kid. You know, I came from a lower working class background. My father <clears throat> worked for the company in the accounting department. That was had its painful moments when I worked in the field and daylight pipes and dug trenches and saw all the oil that was seeping into the ground mm. all around El Segundo and on the transport ships where we would transport oil back and forth. I would see the leaking and so forth. And it struck me as um, wrong. And so therefore, what I learned there was, well, I. Of course I took this job because it paid well. But what I saw when I took the job put me in contest with why I took it. And, and I think eventually I realized that the most important thing was to look at the, the consequences of what this all meant. And, and it, it created a, a tough thing for me and my dad. Because there were some good people working with that yeah. company. There were good people and still are, you know, working with that company. But they had to buy the... They had to buy the the, the company's song, you know, and, and uh, the song was wrong, I felt. As, as perhaps it still is, and perhaps that you just also summarized the political situation at the moment. Uh, Robert Redford, trustee with the National uh, Natural Resources Defense Council, the new video is at their site. Uh, great, thanks once again. We appreciate it. You're welcome.